Hello, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny. Welcome you once again to the program Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. Truly, God has been blessing us. This has been a great year uh, in this church. God has really moved from the very beginning. We, I'm going to share with you, in fact, over the next few weeks, how we opened up the, the year. We started with a month of consecration, and it was prayer and fasting, coming together and hearing from God, hearing from the Word. It was a dynamic week, a year, a month. One of the things that came out of that, in fact, is a monthly service we're now doing every fourth Friday evening of the, the month. It's every fourth Friday here at, this, at the church at 7 p.m. It is a dynamic prayer and deliverance service. And man, it's a great, great time. Different, if you will, from the rest of our services because it's really about getting connected to God through prayer, through the anointing, through the Holy Spirit, through uh, the outpouring of the gifts and, and we're laying on of hands through uh, the prophetic word. It, it's a powerful, anointed time. So I want to invite you you to come and join us this fourth Friday coming up here at Destiny Preparation Church, 7 p.m. You will be blessed. I guarantee you, you will find a blessing in this house on during that service. Our other services also take place during the week. We have Bible study on Wednesdays, on Sundays. We have uh, Sunday school for all the different age groups. It's a great time for each age group to learn and come together and even make connections from adults all the way to children. So you can bring your children and then you can also learn uh, some things ab about the word as the with the adults. It's 10 a.m. and as well at 11.30 a.m. we come together uh, for our morning worship service. God has been blessing, filling the house, and the power of God has been moving. I also want to invite you to join us for our Saturday morning prayer, which takes place every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. You can call into that line uh, and connect up with the, the atmosphere and the spirit of prayer. If you have a prayer request, you can share it right on the phone line and we'll pray for you. If you just want to be in the atmosphere, you don't have to say a word. Just call in, connect up, and, and, and let prayer overshadow in your life, in your home, uh, in your environment. If you're at work and you got things going on, call the prayer line. You'll receive something great, an anointing through the prayer line. And uh, you can give your testimony as well uh, if, you, if you have something you'd like to share that God has done for you through prayer. So join us at any of these services at any time. Now let me take you to this. It comes from a service from, again, the beginning of the month as we start, the beginning of the year, as we started uh, in this aspect of connecting to God. So we started with a series on how we connect to God. And the first week was on connecting to God through prayer and fasting. So I want to share a little bit of that with you. And I pray it will help you. If you're in a moment right now where you're needing guidance, you need to hear from God, then listen to these words. I believe they will help you to give you a direction of what to do to draw close to God and to hear what God is saying in your life. God bless you. Hope to see you here real soon. Consecration itself means to dedicate or to set apart. Consecrate or consecration is to dedicate or to set apart. It's to intentionally set something aside for God's purposes. We intentionally take something and set it apart. You can consecrate certain things to God, certain elements. In, in many churches, there are certain uh, things that are consecrated for the purpose of God. This building can be consecrated as a sanctuary and a house of God. Sometimes we have certain sacraments, for example, communion, and we'll have uh, certain cups or certain things that are consecrated. We only use these in terms of, of, of for God, for sacred purposes. You as an individual can also be consecrated to God. And that's what we're doing this, this month is we are in consecration. We are setting ourselves apart for the will and the purposes of God during this month. That's why we're, we're in essence taking ourselves out of play and putting ourselves on the shelf, putting ourselves in a private place. Got a little ring on that. Bring this down. So we have to, sometimes we have to, you know, we talk about a prayer closet. We are pulling this away into a private place of the presence of God. That is your objective for the month. I normally would be a main player. I may on the main stage, but right now I'm pulling aside. I got a time out because I am set apart this month for the things of God. My objective of this month is to hear from God to receive direction from God, 
to get pointed in the right direction, to find unity in the presence of God, to invite the presence of God to come in. This is our objective for this month. We want to see God move in this place this month. And so we're setting apart in order to reach out to God to say, God, look, we want a special connection with you in the month of January, the first month of the decade of the year of 2020. Amen. Amen. We read a scripture last Sunday and on Tuesday from Romans chapter 13 verse 11 and 12, that spoke of the time. We talked about this aspect of on, on Tuesday night, that the time, the time is critical. The time that God opens doors and opens certain opportunities, it's critical for us to be ready when God gets ready to move. In Romans 13, 11, it says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of our sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Listen to verse 12. It says, the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Cast off. Everybody say cast off, cast off. and put on. Sometimes we have to cast off in order to put on. When you go home today, and you're going to go to change clothes from your church clothes into something else. You're going to have to take the clothes you have off first to put on the next set of clothes. And your next set of clothes speaks to the next thing that's on your agenda. You dress a certain way to come to church. And when you go home, eventually you're going to change into something else that represents another aspect of what you're about to do. Sooner or later tonight, you'll change clothes into what you're going to sleep in. And so often we have specific clothing that's attired specifically for the purpose of sleep, going to sleep at night. It represents the fact that it's time for me to rest. You put on certain clothing that you wear to work, and it represents that you are preparing now for the work that you have to do. If you're going to go out and do some dirty work, clean the clock, or work on the car, or clean the garage, or clean the basement, you put on a different set of clothes aligned with what you're about to do. But you always have to take off what you had on in order to prepare for what you're about to do next. Are you still with me? Last night I was doing some work in my, in my basement, and my basement's gotten dusty and all kind of stuff. And so I've been working on it to clean it up. And I had on some clothing, and after I got done, I didn't immediately take that clothing off. And I sat down on the couch, and when I sat down on the couch, I started having some breathing issues because there was dust on the clothing that I had. I had finished the job, but I hadn't removed the clothing, and so the clothing was starting to impact me. I had to take all that off and wash off to get that off of me because what I had engaged in in my work clothes was carrying with me. Sometimes you have to take off what you have on in order to get ready to put on what you need for the next level of what you're about to do. And so it is, the Bible tells us here that we have to, therefore, if we realize, if we recognize the time, if we recognize the moment that we're in, if we recognize that this is a period where we truly want something you, new and unique and different from God, you're going to have to take off what was old and put on something new. He says, recognizing the time, he says, now let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor, armors of clothing, the armor of light. How many of you realize that the works of darkness were, 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 were coating you like clothing? Hmm. Not only the things that you've done, but the things that you've been around, the atmosphere that you've been in covers you like clothing. Think about the places that you hang out, the people that you've been around, the, 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 the type of attitudes that they have, all the stuff they're saying. I'm not saying it, but they're saying it, right? Every time you're in an atmosphere full of, 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 of contention and, and, and cursing and all kind of wildness and, and things that are outside of the will of God, that atmosphere is coating on you like that dust coated on me on my clothing last night. And sometimes you have to wash that off before you can take. Don't think that you're going into church dressed like you were in the basement. Uh-huh. 
You have to sometimes get all that old stuff off you, cleanse off of you so that you can get your God clothes on now so you can approach God. In fact, in the Old Testament, when they went into the tabernacle, before they went to service in the tabernacle, they had to change their clothes. They had to take off their street clothes and put on garments that represented being in the presence of God. Garments that were holy, garments that had been prayed over, garments that had been consecrated or set apart for the specific purpose of being in the presence of the holy God. Saints of God, I want you to understand that during this month, we have an objective to take off that old atmosphere that's coated us, that, that ungodliness that's been running in your ears, that, those crazy thoughts that have been messing with your mind and giving, changing you uh, to thinking worldly thoughts about things instead of godly. Sometimes we think about a situation, instead of thinking about it as God would have us to think, we think about what the world says. Well, I, if I was you, I would just, mm, you better look out now. Mm, if it was me, uh, I wouldn't take all that. I wouldn't say, come on, you have all that worldly wisdom an intellect feeding into your heart, clothing you, coating you every day, and you cannot hear what God is saying because of all the stuff that the world has put on you. Are y'all with me today? Amen. We have to take it off. Tell somebody we got to take it off. And so in order to do that, we have to reprioritize in this month. We have to align ourselves with this, this takeoff time, this, this stop trying to, listen, so many times we try and go through, through life with the same clothes on. Mm -hmm. We just try and carry whatever it is that we've been through and we had to jump into and take along with us. We come into the church with the same mindset. We got that drive through mindset that we've had uh, in our lives because I got to run to here and pick this one up and drop this one over there and go over there, come over there. And we come to the church with that same drive through mindset. I'm just going to run through church and then I'm going to go through the, mm -hmm. we've got to take it off. Tell somebody we got to take it off. These things that have, have, been, uh, uh, have been put on us and, and, and applied into our lives. That's why we have to re reprioritize. And if you don't constrain the flesh, it will not be constrained. If you do not constrain your life, it will not change. It's not going to open up for you just because you decided, okay, it's January. I want to praise God this month. Oh, no. Uh, those people are still going to call your number. Uh, those people are still going to put the same task and demands on you. Your job is still going to call you for more. Your children are still going to want all of your time. Every situation is still going to be pulling on you until you decide to reprioritize and take it off. Amen. Am I helping you today? We have to make the change. We have to make the change. We have to reprioritize. We don't want to go through the whole month and then wonder why nothing changed. I went through the whole month and I fasted. I didn't eat, but still everything is still the same. What, what happened? You have to reprioritize. You have to take off self. Now, prayer and fasting. We're talking about prayer and fasting today and connecting to God through prayer and fasting because prayer and fasting are important tools to connecting to God. They tend to work in combination. You can pray and fasting oftentimes is an enhancer to your prayer life. Oftentimes we pray, we pray on the go, we pray in situations, we pray here, there as we pass through. That, that's good. I'm not saying that's bad. Think about prayer. Uh, uh, fasting is about being an antenna on top of your prayer life to help you to focus in to a higher strength in your channel. Are you with me? Prayer is about communication with God. Prayer is purposeful speaking and listening to God. Prayer is not just about saying a bunch of stuff. Prayer is about having a conversation. It's about opening the door for communication. Prayer is about an invite. Prayer is making a phone call. You get on the phone, you dial a number because you have an intent of speaking to somebody. When that person picks up the other line, you begin to have a conversation with them. You don't automatically just start telling them what you want. You don't call McDonald's. Pick up the phone. Hello, I want two orders of fries. I want three. No, no, no. You have a, when you have a relationship with someone, you say, good morning. How you doing? How's everything going? How was your night? What's happening with you? You start a conversation that has to do with your relationship. Amen? 
And so prayer is about communication with God. Lord, I am grateful for another time, another opportunity to speak to you. Lord, I'm calling out to you right now. I'm reaching out to you. I invite you to come and speak with me. Lord, I want to hear from you. I want to talk to you. Prayer is about talking to God. Prayer enables alignment to purpose and direction. In other words, prayer uh, produces focus. That's why we pray together, because it aligns us in focus to what we are looking for and expecting from God. God can elevate all of us in terms of our intent, our direction, by praying together, by calling on God together. It aligns us. We now have a unified effort and desire of something we want to see and hear from God. And so prayer is a matter of focusing us to the purposes of God, what God wants to do with us and through us, what's coming next. It's alignment. Prayer opens us up to what God wants to do. I want you to get that. Prayer is not just about us calling God to tell him everything we want. Prayer is about us speaking to hear what God wants to do. We have a responsibility as the people of God, as the body of Christ. We talked about this the other day, uh, that we are the enablers of the power and the presence of God into the earth. Get that, get that, get that. We are the enablers of the power and presence of God into the earth. I want you to get, I want you to get that. How is it that the presence of God enters into the earth? We, the body of Christ, are the enablers of the power and presence of God into the earth. In other words, God comes because we call him. Why don't we see God? We haven't called God. We look and complain about all the disastrous stuff happening in the world. The world is not calling on God. The world is not drawing the presence of God. We, the church, are the ones that empower the presence of God, engage him into the earth. That is our calling, our responsibility. If we are not doing it, we are not doing our job. And the earth is hurting because the church is not calling God and his purposes into the earth. So our responsibility in prayer is is to seek out the will and purpose of God so that it may enter into the earth. Understand that. I'm going to get to it a little bit later, but that's that scripture. That's that prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We pray to God, Lord, let your will be done in earth as it already is being done in heaven. That's not the issue. The issue is getting God's will in the earth. And the way it comes is because we call on it to come into the earth. If we're not calling, it's not guaranteed to come. We are the ones that are empowered to do that. And so prayer opens up to what God wants to do. Fasting now is the next level. Fasting is submission unto God. It's removal of distractions. We've already talked about this. And the preparation of the atmosphere. I want you to get the atmosphere today. Because there are certain atmospheres in which the presence and power of God moves. And there are certain atmospheres in which God pulls away. I want you to understand that God can pull away from the church if the atmosphere isn't right. I got scripture for it. The book of Ezekiel. Amen. The Bible showed them that the, in the tabernacle, the spirit of God showed Ezekiel holes in the walls of the tabernacle. And it said inside there were serpents inside the tabernacle. Those serpents represented spirits evil spirits that the people of God who were responsible for bringing down the presence of God, they stopped calling on God and they allowed the devil to enter into the very tabernacle. And as a result of that, God did not come down and strike down the devil. God went back up to heaven. Are are you getting me? If we are not calling in the presence of God, if we're not doing our job, we have a job to do. Our job is to rebuke the devil. Our job is to call in the presence of God. If we're not doing our job, I told you the other week, the devil will take whatever he can take and whatever he take, he what? He keeps. If the devil can come in the church because we are not casting him out of the church, he'll come in the church and guess what? He'll keep the church. He'll take God's very house until God leaves it because the atmosphere isn't right. The atmosphere is important. Am I helping you today? 
Amen. The atmosphere is important, and we are responsible for maintaining the atmosphere. There are things that we have to take off. Get back to that again, casting off the works of darkness, because when we bring the works of darkness in here, we bring the devil in with us, and we invite him in. Amen. Just like the dust that came out of the out of the attic, you brought it up with you and you didn't change it all. So guess what? It came right with you. We allow the enemy to come from the world in that hateful mindset, that attitude that we're carrying, that 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 that, that mindset of division and confusion and, and attack mindset. I'm, I'm going to get them all today. I'm messing. Mm -mm, they messing with me. I'm going to mess with them first. The, the mindsets that we carry in with us, the confusion that is caused. God says he's not the author of confusion. If God didn't cause it, where did it come from? We allowed it to come in on us and didn't take it off. Are you with me today? We are responsible. I'm trying to help you understand that we're responsible. If it's going to change, we've got to stand up and change what we're doing. We cast the devil off, and then the presence of God will come in. And so fasting is about casting off, stripping off all these things, all these worldly things, all these worldly attitudes, all these worldly mindsets, all these other distractions, all these things that have been in my head and getting in my dreams at night and all my thoughts and my mind's going this way and that way because I got all this junk, amen, floating in and out and through my mind. It's time to cast it off. Anybody here play video games? Y'all yeah, used to play. Some of us still do. Thank you. <laughs> you ever play a video game and you have some of these games and you play it and you play it and play it and when you get done, you, you're somewhere and all of a sudden you start seeing the images in your mind that you saw in the video game? Yeah. Because it imprints. Some of y'all just lying. Y'all know y'all play. Yeah, at least y'all used to. Y'all remember, I forget what those were, the, was, the, the things used to drop down and we said Gal Galaga and all them games and things. Y'all remember. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Acting like, no, we don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Tell it like it is. Amen. Those images will lock into your mind. And even when you walk away from the activity, it's still in your mind. Listen to me. Those conversations lock into your mind. The attitude, the frustration, the yelling, the, all the exertion that went out, the, the stress levels lock into your mind and they get on you like clothes that are sticking to your body. And until you take them off, just rushing in through the church doesn't do anything but bring your dirt in the house. Tell somebody you got to take it off. Sometimes you got to wash it off. Amen. I had, I, had to t I had to take it off and I had to go wash it off last night. It was, mm, it was everywhere. Amen. I got to get away from that. And then I felt better. Amen. So there, there comes this fasting is about removing these distractions. There comes a time when, Lord, I got to get washed. I got to get cleaned. I got to wipe all this stuff. There is no sense in me going to you, God, until I get this dirt off of me. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. There's no sense of me even showing up. God, I need to talk to you. And God looking at you and the atmosphere is not right. And God is saying, go wash up. Mm -hmm. If they went into the tabernacle with their street clothes on, God would never honor their sacrifice. He'd tell them, go wash up. You need to go out back and do what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to cleanse your hands in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the in the pool that's out in front of there. You're supposed to put on the right garments. You're supposed to have the right scent to you when you come in. When the atmosphere is right, then God will come and respond. Saints of God, if we want to see a change, we've got to change the atmosphere. And I want you to understand that we are responsible. We are not waiting on God. God is waiting on us. Are you hearing me today? Amen. This is what we have to learn. And so fasting is a part of that. Impactful prayer involves the right posture. I want to talk to you about this aspect of being in the right posture. Impactful tr prayer. James chapter 5, verse 16. The second part of it says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Effectual, not just any prayer. Not just, Lord, I came here today and I just want you to do everything, make the world a better place. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Effectual, fervent prayer. 
Fervent prayer is a prayer of, that's determined. Effectual prayer is prayer that is made under the right conditions. We have to be determinate, purposeful focused, prioritized in our prayer and our prayer life. I am focused on hearing from God. I am determined to he receive something from God. God, I'm here not just because it's that time of day, not just because it's Sunday, not just because of whatever. I'm here because I want to receive something from you. And I'm willing to take off in order to put on. I'm willing to let go in order to take on something new from you. Whatever I need to do, I am calling on your name until I receive something from, the, from your presence. Effective, effectual, fervent prayer. Many religions engage in specific postures and positionings. And we talk about different religions different times and, oh, they ain't right for this and, oh, they ain't right for that. But it's amazing to me that some of these not right religions serve their God at such a greater extent than we do. We are so casual about our relationship with God because we talk about grace and mercy. When others are trying to do everything they possibly can to serve and honor their God. Don't let grace and mercy stop us from serving God fervently. Pray. 